The Untold Story of Amadou Ahijo, the First President of Cameroon By now, every Cameroonian must have heard the name Amadou Ahijo and the controversies that surrounded his death. Amadou Babatura Ahijo was a Cameroonian politician who was the first president of Cameroon, holding the office from 1960 until 1982. Ahijo played a major role in Cameroon's independence from France, as well as reuniting the French and English-speaking parts of the country. During his time in office, he established a centralized political system. Ahijo established a single-party state under the Cameroon National Union in 1966. In 1972, Ahijo abolished the federation in favor of unitary state. Before we go deeper to find out about this very popular pre-colonial leader, make sure to smash that subscription button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new uploads. Early Life Ahijo was born in Gara, a major river port along the Beni River in northern Cameroon, which was at the time a French Mandate territory. His father was a Fulani village chief, while his mother was a Fulani of slave descent. Ahijo's mother raised him as a Muslim and sent him to Quranic school as a child. In 1932, he began attending local government primary school. After failing his first school certification examination in 1938, Aijo worked for a few months in the veterinary service. He returned to school and obtained his school certification a year later. Aijo spent the next three years attending secondary school at the École Primaire Supérieure in Yaoundé, the capital of the Mandate, studying for a career in the civil service. At school, Aijo also played soccer and competed as a cyclist. In 1942, Aijo joined the civil service as a radio operator for a postal service. As part of his job, he worked on assignments in several major cities throughout the country, such as Douala, Gaoundere, Petwa, and Mokolo. According to his official biographer, Aijo was the first civil servant from northern Cameroon to work in the southern areas of the territory. His experiences throughout the country gave him a sense of national identity and provided him the sagacity to handle the problems of governing a multi-ethnic state. Political career. In 1946, Ahijo entered territorial politics. From January 28, 1957 to May 10, 1957, Ahijo served as president of the Legislative Assembly of Cameroon. In the same year, he became deputy prime minister in the de facto head of state Andre Marin Bida's government. Upon independence in 1960, Ahijo, as leader of the Cameroon Union, was elected president and he persuaded part of British Cameroon to join his country. He was re-elected in 1965, 1970, 1975 and 1980, gradually establishing the complete dominance of his own party and outlawing all orders in 1976. He experienced a rebellion in the 1960s from a group known as the Union of the Peoples of Cameroon, but defeated it by 1970. In the early 1970s, he created an unpopular constitution which ended the autonomy of British Cameroon and established unitary rule. Though many of his actions were dictatorial, his country became one of the most stable in Africa. He was considered to be more conservative and less charismatic than most post-colonial African leaders, but his policies allowed Cameroon to attain comparative prosperity. Ahijo's resignation from politics Ahijo resigned eventually, apparently for health reasons, on 4th November 1982, but there are many theories surrounding the resignation. It is generally believed that his French doctor tricked Ahijo about his health and was immediately succeeded by Prime Minister Paul Bia two days later. That he stepped down in favor of Bia, a Christian from the south and not a Muslim from the north like himself, was considered surprising. Ahijo's ultimate intentions are unclear. It is possible that he intended to return to the presidency at a later point when his health improved, and another possibility is that he intended for Maigari Belobuba, a fellow Muslim from the north, who succeeded Bia as Prime Minister to be his eventual successor as President, with Bia in effectively a caretaker role. Although the Central Committee of the ruling Cameroon National Union urged Ahijo to remain President, he declined to do so, but he did agree to remain as the President of the CNU. However, he also arranged for Bia to become the CNU Vice President and handle party affairs in his absence. Additionally, in January 1983, Ahijo traveled across the country in a tour in support of Bia. Ahijo on exile. Later that year, however, a major grudge developed between Ahijo and Bia. On July 19, 1983, Ahijo went into exile in France and Bia began removing Ahijo's supporters from positions of power and eliminating symbols of his authority, replacing Ahijo's portraits with his own and removing Ahijo's name from the anthem of the CNU. On August 22nd, Bia announced that a plot allegedly involving Ahijo had been uncovered. For his part, Ahijo severely criticized Bia, alleging that Bia was abusing his power that he lived in fear of plots against him and that he was a threat to national unity. 
The two were able to reconcile despite the efforts of several foreign leaders, and Aicho announced on August 27 that he was residing as head of the CNU. In exile, Aicho was sentenced to death in absentia in February 1984, along with two others, for participation in the June 1983 coup plot, although Bia committed the sentence to life in prison. Aicho denied involvement in the plot. A violent but unsuccessful coup attempt in April 1984 was also widely believed to have been orchestrated by Aicho. In his remaining years, Aicho divided his time between France and Senegal. He died of a heart attack in Dakar on the 30th of November 1989 and was buried there. He was officially rehabilitated by a law in December 1991. Bia said on 30th October 2007 that the matter of returning Aicho's remains to Cameroon was a family affair. An agreement on returning Aicho's remains was reached in June 2009 and it was expected that they would be returned in 2010. There is a stadium named after Aijo in Yaoundé. Few images remain of President Amadou Aijo, and it is often said that the Bia regime made an active effort to erase any visual or audio references to Cameroon's first head of state. Wife and Children Germaine Habiba Aijo was a Cameroonian politician and nurse. She was the wife of the very first president of Cameroon, Amadou Aijo. She was thus the first lady of Cameroon from 1960 until 1982. She died on the morning of 20th April 2021 at the age of 89 at Dakar in Senegal, where she had been suffering from protracted illness. She became friends with Amadou Aijo in 1955 and they were married on 17th August 1956. They had three daughters, Babette, Aisatu and Aminatu. She also had a son, Daniel Tufik, born before her marriage with Aijo. Muhammadu Boajika Aijo, now a deputy and a visiting ambassador, is the son of Aijo with his first wife, Ada Garwa. After the resignation of her husband in 1982 and her death sentence in abstentia as a result of her supposed involvement in the failed coup of 1984, they settled in Dakar, Senegal, where she still lived. Her husband died on 30 November 1989. She campaigned for his official rehabilitation, including the repatriation of his ashes to Cameroon. She died on 19th April 2021 at age 89 in the car, Senegal. There you have it, explorers. Everything you need to know about Amadou Aijo, the former and the very first head of state of Cameroon. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing content all over Africa.